Australia's underemployment crisis. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC because it discusses the crisis that we're facing with regards to underemployment. Now there's a lot of discussion about the unemployment rate and how it's shot up. And this is this, if you're not aware, there's the ABS methodology. And what they do is they have a survey they do during a particular period. They bring up a whole bunch of people or interview a bunch of people. And, you know, they've got questions that they ask. Essentially, if you're working one hour within their survey period, you're considered employed. And depending upon, you know, if you're looking for work or if you're not looking for work, that factors into if you're in the if you're actually participating in the workforce. Now there is another methodology, one that I tend to prefer, and this is I didn't discover this until viewers mentioned it on my channel in the comments quite some time ago. It is the Roy Morgan methodology, where they also have their own un under unemployment and underemployment estimates, and all the way back from 2005. So in 2005 they said. The combined underemployment and unemployment was 15.2%. Now, if we go down to, <clears throat> if we go down to right down, all the way down to current year 2020, our combined underemployment and unemployment is sitting at 24.5%. So just this year, from January, it's gone to, from 18.4, hit a peak in late March of 27.4. So they they're doing multiple surveys per month. So now we're sitting at 24.5 and that has our underemployment rate and underemployment is people want more hours. They're not getting enough. I'd say everyone on one hour a week is underemployed according to ABS, but nevertheless, 14.8% and unemployed at 9.7%. So this figure, the combined underemployment and unemployment rate should be what is discussed, should be what I'll bring up on a chart that's showed on the news. That is a big issue, and we'll have to see the ramifications that this will have on the economy moving forward, on the recession that we're entering in. Because a lot of people, a lot of business owners will do what they can to keep their team together. You've invested in them. You've got a relationship there with them. You like your work, your staff. You want to keep them, and you want to you know, keep moving ahead. But if costs are down, sometimes you cut hours as a way, of, or revenues down, you cut hours to save cash flow to keep people. So I suspect we're going to see some more or an increase in underemployment, at least the beginning of this recession with all the unknowns that are going on. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at this article, everyone. So underemployment, underemployment, the key symptom of the pandemic recession. So Anna Ludwig unloads equipment from the back of a ute as her partner, Jeremy Sims, runs through a verbal checklist, waterproofing, Brushes, radio. I can't work without a radio. And she laughs, the most important thing, right? I'm on the tools, she says. Keeps me busy. But the roofing business isn't Anna's usual job. She was employed full-time as growth and operations manager for a tech startup and often, tra often traveling to meet clients and drum up business until the pandemic hit. Like hundreds of thousands of other Australians, she was stood down without pay as the public health measures put in place to quell the spread of the pandemic killed economic activity. Now she's back part-time in a regular job thanks to JobKeeper. And I'm down more than half my income with the job subsidy, and that's quite a bit of money when you're looking at it. And, I mean, people are taking a financial hit here, guys, and that's going to lead through to their ability to service their mortgages. So this is where, this is where September and October will be interesting because a lot of people are heavily in debt a lot of people are going to take an income hit uh, when JobKeeper is pulled away. The banks are going to remove their support and we're in a recession. So consumer confidence isn't doing too well. We'll have to see today business confidence and conditions has been released. So we'll, I'll do a video on that when it comes out so we can get an update to see how it's going. So when all of those things come to a head, that's where since property is the key indicator of our civilization, it may manifest itself in property. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, guys? You think I'm being a bit hyperbolic to say property is the yardstick of the Australian civilization? So, so, and she's helping out her man for free. 
after he had to lay off a number of his usual staff. She's a great, great help, says Jeremy, but I'd rather she working full-time in a proper job. We need the income. So he's had to let go of some of his team and the missus is helping out, which is what happens, which is reality, you know? This, this is the thing in, uh, in a lot of marriages. When times get tough, you just work together and you do what you have to do. Uh, that's a, I like seeing that. That's encouraging to see. You know, we're all these talks about in IPV and, and marriages breaking up. It's good to see an example where a husband and wife are getting together through the tough times. Because for richer or poorer, guys, for richer or poorer. So recession of underemployment. Anna Ludwig's story is the story of the recession we are now in. A profound collapse in available work and hours worked in the economy is one of the defining features. And it's only just started. It's only just started. Remember, this is just the big, the data that we have is only from the month, which is mainly affected by the bushfires and JobKeeper is propping it up. The official GDP figures released this week don't fully capture it nor does the official unemployment estimate of just 6.2%. Add to the official jobless the 700,000 people still employed on JobKeeper, but with zero work, an unprecedented number who've had their work hours cut down, and half a million people who've dropped out of the labor force altogether. Half a million. 500,000 who've just given up. And you get a labor underutilization rate of 20%. That's more than 2 million people. Without the government's JobKeeper program, the dole queues will be staggering, enough to overwhelm Centrelink and related support services. The mass defaults on debt and payments would cause havoc in the financial system. Without the government's doubling of the unemployment benefit labelled as JobSeeker, the level of poverty and hardship would be overwhelming. For years, the unemployment rate has been a partial and misleading guide to the health of the jobs market, and that's... <clears throat> That's very true. It takes broader measures of underemployment to shine a light on the labor market when labor when sorry when large numbers of casuals and contractors act as an economic buffer, absorbing cuts to work hours without necessarily losing their jobs altogether. You know, I, I bet you there are people out there that have never done a full time week of work in their life. Just think about that, everyone. And think about the Pareto principle, but we'll get back to this. Now, JobKeeper is distorting the picture. The unemployment rate is even less helpful. Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe told the Senate Select Committee on the pandemic last month that the RBA was using the decline in overall hours worked to assess the depth of the economic crisis. And that, that is really what we should be looking at. I'll have to get a, get a chart on that, guys, so we can look at it or refer to it. It had been expecting a 20% fall in work hours worked. Now, because of Australia's success in curtailing the pandemic, it's hoping that only 15% of hours worked will be shared, which Dr. Lowe observed is still shocking. That is a huge hit to the economy, guys, a huge blow to what we're producing. Keep in mind that with government stimulus programs propping up the economy, exactly, that's with all the government pumping it out. Staring down the barrel at Depression Mark II. So remember, you know, we learned it in in school and history when they still had history about the depression but you're going to experience one guys hopefully it'll breed some resilience and be good for our civilization prime minister morrison said he is hoping the economy can snap back to business as usual once the pandemic is beaten but as many leading economists have repeatedly pointed out business as usual before the crisis was a weak economy with a perennial, perennially low wage growth, low inflation, low productivity, low productivity growth, weak consumption, weak business investment, there is no strong economy to snap back to. And he's right. I mean, I'll just bring up this chart here from the, the wage growth forecast from the RBA. It's as the Senate at the Senate hearing, the RBA boss took every opportunity to drum home the message that the worst thing government could possibly do was to withdraw economic stimulus too early i mean we're addicted to it now our economy's propped up to it we've even got insane insane oh, that's building approvals they've gone up so that's a good sign we've even got insanely low cash rates guys and people are struggling to meet payments on their houses houses at this stage job keeper and the boosted job seeker benefits are due to expire in september 
along with relief from mortgage and debt repayments for bank customers who've lost their income in the crisis. Nonetheless, many economists expect the government will have to keep the stimulus measures in place and even extend them. Some say that to do otherwise will be madness. The big, prob the big problem we have is a huge collapse in demand, said Alison Pennington, senior economist at the Center for Future Work, a labor movement aligned think tank. We are staring down the barrel of depression mark two. What did we do last time we had a depression? We sat back and listened to ideologues who say we had to wait for the private sector recovery. We waited over 10 years and people suffered. Um, sure. We're at a point now where we can learn from history. No, that's not what happened. The government intervened, particularly in the States, intervened and exacerbated the situation. Perhaps we do need to learn a little bit more about history. So what history shows, she continued, is the recovery from the Great Depression took a fully-fledged reconstruction plan of sustained government spending and taking on significant public debts, which were paid off by expanding the economy, putting people in good jobs, and growing the economic pie. See, it's the interventionist approach. This is the kind... Well, and then you had, you had huge taxation in the United States, and you had an economy that eventually well, benefited avoiding taxation rather than innovation. This is the kind of comprehensive policy we'd need right now. There are millions of jobs and people's livelihoods on the line. Anna Ludwig is no economist, but she, she too fears what will happen if the stimulus payments end as scheduled in September. I'm worried, she said. It's just four months away. Can you turn around a client that quickly? Can you get a new business in the door? Are people going to be cautious? What about the people who have overextended themselves and lost work when bank relief runs out? Once it all happens comes to a halt, what happens then? Well, people have to put up with it. People will have to sell. People will have to take other jobs. People will have to humble themselves and realize maybe they have overextended themselves and that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do and they need to leave, live a bit frugally for some time. It happens. It's called life. Have we forgotten that? What do you think, guys? Do you think we're just too soft? I mean, she'd be too young to remember the last recession. Look at her, yeah. She'd be too young. Definitely. We'll have to see. What do you think will happen, everyone? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you think, do you think the government should do everything it can to protect us from the recession? Or is some creative destruction necessary? Have we been too cotton wool cotton ball their whole life, our whole childhood. Is that why we're getting such a weak people? Let me know your thoughts and opinions below, everyone. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. Simply watching the videos, sharing, and commenting is a great way to help spread and grow the channel. You can support us via financially joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon, using our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay, or independent reserve and KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.